Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Pick a Card reading. Today's theme is pretty simple. It is message from our spirit guides. And the reason I have chosen this particular topic is pretty obvious. On one hand, we are in the period between two eclipses, the partial lunar eclipse in Taurus approaching very, very quickly, just at the end of the week. And eclipses do uh, involve that the veil between the worlds is especially thin. So we can get messages and whatever lies beyond the veil over here in a much more easy, easier way to understand than anytime you know normal. And the other uh, element is that we are also fast approaching the celebration of Samain, Halloween, Day of the Dead, or Fires of Hecate, or however you may call that celebration, which also represents that the veil between the worlds is especially thin, of course, due mainly to our own contribution, yet it doesn't really matter. These two events, you know, make these types of readings and to channel uh, especially powerful. So perhaps some relevant messages and guidance may come for you. Uh, we have three piles to choose from today. This is the first pile, this one. This is the second pile. As, and this is the third pile. So I'm going to allow a couple of seconds to make your choice based, of course, on your intuitive senses. And I'm really sorry about the minimalistic setup, but... No, I do not have a camera, so whatever whatever works for the laptop. And of course, my living conditions. So with this being said, I'm going to take the other two piles away and start with this first pile. So this is for everyone who has chosen or was guided for the first pile. So let's see what your spirit guides would like to tell you. This message basically can be absolutely anything, so I'm not really conditioning it. We have the Ouroboros, which is the Wheel of Fortune in reverse position. We have the Sun upright. We have the Judgment also in reverse position. These are major arcana, so this is pretty interesting. Oh, these are too many. I'm not going to take them into consideration. And we have the Six of Swords, also in reverse position. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clarify each of these cards and see the big picture, see the message. But before I do that, let us take a look at what these cards, what the combination of these cards show us, you know, in, in the big picture. So the Wheel of Fortune reversed. This represents that probably even in the present moment, you are in a period where exactly as it says, the Wheel of Fortune is about to turn. There you are in a period uh, between a bigger closure in your life, but regardless of what that closure might represent, you know, in a practical way, how it manifests, how it looks like in your life, which area of your life, what exactly happens, you know, regardless of that, this is where the whole setup wants to change. This is where whatever that closure is, it is just a reflection of a deeper imprint, almost like the energetic matrix of your life that is transforming, that is changing how things used to be before in so very many different ways, not ju just necessarily, you know, the practical side of life, but your modus operandi, your typical feelings, your typical perceptions, your typical worldview, uh, 
also your faith and belief system, not necessarily religiously, but more like how you interpret external reality, how you interpret whatever happens in your life and you integrate it in your faith. And of course, this process, it's vice versa as well. So this isn't just unilateral. This is like an exchange. You know, uh, I would like to symbolize this as breathing. It's always an exchange, inhale and exhale. You know what I mean? So everything is profoundly changing. And because of that, maybe right now in the present, you are a little bit confused. You are, you feel like a big standstill in your life where it might not necessarily be, you know, all that physical, but you just feel that there is a very, very strong energetic pressure around you in the present and it's not going anywhere. And that is because you feel this turning of faith. And of course, the other side of the spectrum, you're also before, before a new beginning. But maybe that new beginning is really under a shroud of mystery. Maybe even... You know, your inner forces cannot make sense of it. They cannot anticipate what is happening. And that is because some things are not even created yet. Do not, you know, do not panic or do not be frightened because the thing that they're not created yet does not really represent years and years of creation. As soon as certain things are decided and determined, within you and your life, of course, that creation is going to go forward very, very, very quickly. So, but before this wheel of fortune turns, you feel a little bit stuck, but this isn't the classic case of stuck where, you know, everything is like a desert in your life because you do feel it. You feel the great pressure of the change coming, yet you simply cannot anticipate even intuitively the future because the future is not yet determined and this is exactly the sun card it is only the sun card that is upright position so the only thing which is more or less determined in the future is that it is built around your creativity your creative expression it is built around the feelings the overall happiness of the inner child and if you are someone who has children then your happiness of your children is very deeply included in this and also this is where the sun card does represent where you do need to live you do need to experience certain things in your life which in the past either were tainted you might have experienced them but something else in your life didn't allow your the immersion tainted in that sense, not that someone actually spoiled it for you. Now, or you didn't have them at all. Now, these experiences, which might be so simple, they might be, you know, very small things in life. Yet those have a big, big you know, need and influence. Those are cores of your future because your sun needs to spark up. It needs to shine and, you know, give off, he give off heat. The judgment reverse, well, I already included it because, you know, there are certain things that must be decided. Some inner things, your, uh, for example, how you do, do you judge? How do you look at certain events from the past? Sometimes the judgment reverse represents the need for forgiveness, the need to integrate certain events that happened in the past and release their emotional grip, release their impact, or simply to look at your situation from a different, from also a divine perspective, which you do not know yet. And of course, the Six of Swords in reverse position. Well, look at how this particular tarot deck depicts it. 
as a tactical game of chess where you are in control in the sense that your opponent, opponent not, of course, in an aggressive sense, is life and fate and destiny, so to speak, and you are on the other side, so like a chess. You make a move, life makes a move, etc., etc. But we must not forget that, you know, right now you're in the period between a big change of fate in your life. So this is where the moves are at standstill. The Six of Swords usually represents a transition period. No, as this card depicts, a transition between the start of the match and towards the end of the match. You know, this is where in this game of chess, no one really wins. There isn't a victor and a loser because this is basically how to get from A to Z, for example. And it is almost like a journey. Who's the winner or who is not doesn't really matter here because this isn't a, a game between life and death or a competition of some sort. This is just figuring your way out in life. There are certain things in life which were in plan, but life and your own perception of it, your own interpretation of it, prove that they are not worthy to invest more effort, especially your brainstorming, your ingenuity, your tactics, you know, wisdom, your own wisdom. And those, of course, are discarded, while other things which you might not have seen until now do come into play that they are worthy to uh, receive your intention and energy. Now, let us get a few more uh, clarifications. First, the Wheel of Fortune, the Three of Swords. Now, even the way this deck depicts the Three of Swords is so self-explanatory. You know, is the figure cutting off the chains from the, his wrist? Or is he cutting his wrist after the chains have fallen down? So the Three of Swords, let us get another card because I usually take two cards to clarify something. Sophia. Now, Sophia is the hermit here. So the Three of Swords and Sophia. Now, this hermit, sorry. So this can represent to me either that in the recent past or actually not even the recent past. The recent past had just a mirror projection, a, a, how should a glimpse of the more distant past. So something might have happened in, in your lives very recently which reflect, reflected a similar, a familiar pattern, which played out maybe 10 years ago, nine years ago, something five years ago, potentially, where which led to a massive heartbreak, you know, the Three of Swords. A freedom which was very, very bitter, or the means that you achieved the freedom, freedom of the heart, for example, exiting a relationship, that was not working or did no longer served anyone really. It was just codependency. Or it can be exiting a job, a lifestyle, a, a community living situation. Your house. Regardless of what this was, it led to a heartbreak and a disappointment. And Sophia to a solitude and loneliness. Now, the loneliness is also, you know, it, we cannot judge it because it also led you to a journey to discover your truth, to discover your skills, to discover your talents, to build something up for yourself. So this is what the Wheel of Fortune might represent, that fate is turning in this sense. The heartache, you're moving on from the heartache, and you're moving on from this search. May it be soul searching. May it be amping up your masteries. May it be a transitional period where you're working very, very hard 
in order to invest in yourself, to invest in your skills, to invest in your modus operandi, to invest in your mastery. You might not really, or when you started on this journey, you might not have known that whatever you have in the present moment in your life built up is temporary, you know, a transition. You might have thought that this is it. But actually, maybe it is only now when it dawns on you that this isn't it. Whatever the it, you know, is, you're just navigating towards that right now. So there is a period of endings when a lot is ending. Even the present, what you might have in the present, may it be relationship, may it be a career, job, livelihood, it is ending. But this is where Sophia asks you to tap into your wisdom and do not see it as heartbreak. Maybe this is why a familiar pattern play out very, very recently where something, someone, a situation or how things turn out slightly disappointed you. And you might have thought, well, you know, the same pattern. is my Has my life truly changed all that much? Because it's the same thing, really, you know? But it will. Just give it a chance. I wanted to clarify the sun, but immediately a card popped out and the Ten of Pentacles reversed. So again, this represents a period of uprooting. But this uprooting may be scary for you. Because you don't want to do it over again because you just finished the period of uprooting not so long ago. As I said, a few years ago. But because it is the sun in upright position, it is useful. And we have the lovers reversed. So again, this lovers reversed, well, it can represent, it can represent two separate things, especially with the Ten of Coins. On one hand, for some of you guys, this represents physical healing. You need to take care of a physical problem. Maybe an operation, maybe something that you really, really need to improve in your life. Maybe it's not a medical thing. Maybe you just have to keep a rigorous diet or exercise or something you really need to change in your life. On the other hand, this can represent, as I said, again, a certain kind of divorce, but that divorce doesn't necessarily have to involve a person, even for some people it will, a job or saying goodbye to something that is supporting you in the present moment. And it is that part which might be really scary because you don't know what's coming. But on the other hand, this can also represent unconditional love unconditional help this can represent you know uprooting but the chains and the conditions are also being uprooted so that means much greater freedom and the freedom itself is what makes your sun shine that is one of the biggest requirements of your sun so do not be afraid to let go do and when i say let let go means letting go it doesn't mean helping the process. You don't need to help with the elimination. Quit and stuff like Allow it to happen on its own timing. I know that this inner impulse disturbs you because you feel the strong change and the pressure. But allow it to take place and it's, don't help it. Because the uprooting, the elimination of the old skin, it doesn't really need any help. It is very okay on its own. So we have two cards here. Four of Swords and the King of Swords in reverse position. So the Judgment. This clarifies the Judgment card. So the Four of Swords represents something that has been stagnating for very, very, for a very, very long time in your life. And the judgment is where you need to analyze and decide why was it stagnating so very intensely. And the king of swords in reverse position. Well, the king of swords in reverse position 
does represent that when you reach certain truths, your whole, how should I say, uh, future plan or how you envisage yourself professionally or, you know, in any way, shape and form, what are your present moment future outlooks as in a, a kind of plan, anticipation, those are going to change along with it. So again, when life will definitely lead you to a big inner truth. And when I say inner truth, that can be very well about something external, just that your correct take on it, your co correct integration into your, you know, soul, into your unconscious in a sense where you just archive things, you know, just like a computer. They, these events or whatever these may be need to be archived correctly, you know, and that changes a lot, including what you expect for the fur close future, what your plans are, what your hopes are even. But when I say hopes, this isn't the emotionally or spiritually fueled hope. This is like the practical, you know, plan. The king of sword kind of, you know, set up in your life, basically. So I'm just asking what the six of swords, okay. Nine of swords. And the emperor. So the nine of swords without a shadow of a doubt represents, you know, a transition period, one but one full of worry, one full of restlessness, one full of you do not feel safe and secure. The fact that it's a transition period is just dawning on you now. And that sends your inner being into panic mode because you do not know what to expect. You cannot rely upon any potential future safety like an anchor to ground your mind that it's gonna be okay because i have this or that and that or that in my life you have this is where your mental sense of security is you know hanging but the emperor exactly with with the chess game control will be given over to you this is where you must the right approach right now to make things easier and to make this strong transition period as gentle and as comfortable as you can have it is simply to face fear. Simply not to allow your worries, your restlessness, whatever, you know, the nine of swords, whatever makes you feel like, you know, a victim or left out in the cold or whatever it is that you fear, you really need to confront it and face it that it, as in, it doesn't matter what happens. You have the strength, the will, the determination, and everything that you need in order to triumph, in order to succeed, or better said, or more truthfully said, to get on the other side of the transition where finally it, things are starting to settle down. So what is required for you is a moment of bravery, of courage, of determination, control your be inner being, control your mind. Don't allow your mind to send you into panic, to send you into anxiety, worry, depression, because you don't have the element of safety in your life. You need to trust your senses that whatever is going to end is going to set you free and the new is going to come so very quickly after, even if it's not created right now. But this is how you create it with the emperor, with knowing what it is that you need in your life per feeling. And it is it's the sun that you need, your sun to shine, your creativity to matter, your inner child not to be sorrowful and not to be, you know, imprisoned. And for you, not external events necessarily, to give you the hope and everything that you need, but in order 
for your inner being to simply self-generate that hope, you need to strengthen yourself because that's the sun. Where the light is not external, you are like a flashlight, you are like a candle, you are like a lamp uh, illuminating the path before you. So this is what you really, really need to do. So I do hope that this message was useful. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like and share or leave a donation so I can continue my work and my channel. Thank you again until next time. Bye for now. Hello, everyone who has chosen the second pile. So let us see what the message of your spirit guides are. And again, this can be absolutely anything. This is where we have to allow the spirits to speak freely because we are in a period when the veil between the worlds is especially thin. So their vision about us, our life, our world, our situation is more accurate, let's say, than other times. We have the two of um, cups. We have the wheel of fortune, but in reverse position. We have the temperance. We have the sun. Wow, this is quite this is quite a powerful energy because all of these are major arcana. And I would like to choose one more for conclusion. Father of Swords, so the King of Swords, but reverse. Now I will clarify these cards a little bit later on, but let us first of all look at the bigger picture. What is happening in your life? So the two of cu cups, without a shadow of a doubt, this represents love. And with the feel of, wheel, of, sorry, wheel of fortune reverse, maybe your love is changing. Or maybe fated patterns in your life, in your life are changing in a sense that they are much more fueled by love, so which means your emotional world than any other part of your being. And you see the temperance with the sun card, this represents a period of healing. So faith is changing. And ironically, even for the previous pile, we had the same wheel of fortune reversed. So this might be a very, very powerful fated period for many people, many groups of people. So for you guys, the change needs and wants and, you know, perhaps in a certain way has to bring healing. And the sun was present even for the previous pile. So, so very ironic. This is where your sun is being healed. The sun is the representation of your creativity, of your inner child, of your inner forces, which keep your being fueled with the love of life, the magic of life, the adventure of life. Because I do sense that you are a person who is all that much into the magic of life. Now, when I say the magic of life, it doesn't represent the occult spirituality and the magic in its classic sense, but being immersed into the adventure of life creates a certain flow and it creates the sensation where everything around us is magical, just like the universe is conspiring to make our story all that much interesting and adventurous. Sometimes, of course, in the positive way, other times with challenges, but both of the both sides of the coin do contribute to this magic of life. So this isn't even where it's polarized. You are the type of person who even likes a dose of challenge, who even likes a dose of surprises. Maybe for you, life cannot be surprising enough. You like the element of the unexpected. But be, and the father of swords reverse this. The King of Swords reverse. This tells me that right now, like many of us, because ironically speaking again, 
this card also came out, the King of Swords, in the specifics of the other deck uh, for the previous pile. So it's so interesting that I'm almost seeing the very same cards again. So this King of Swords represents that right now you might not have anything to navigate in the future. You don't know what to expect. There is a certain kind of confusion or chaos or a standstill in your life, but mentally or intellectually just cannot figure out what the next step is going to be. But that is because you feel that fate is going to turn. So let's clarify what this two of cups represents, the hermit. And another card, please. The tower reversed. Now, ironically speaking, the hermit was also part of the previous pile. So if you guys are inclined to check out pile number one, please do so. I don't ever say this in my readings, but this is where the cards are pretty much the same. And I, I'm going to show it to you. I used a totally separate deck. So what are the chances? So the two of cups with the hermit and the tower reversed. Now, I do believe that this two of cups for you guys, for your pile, doesn't necessarily represent a relationship. This is where it's you and life, you and reality. And uh, other people in your life are not even, you know, um, depicted as individuals, but rather other people are just reflection mirrors of reality, of life. And this hermit, without a shadow of a doubt, represents your soul-seeking journey, your inner journey. There was a lot of truth that you had to discover within yourself. But, you know, maybe this is where it's different from the previous pile, because the biggest conclusion for you guys was how lovable and loving you are. You had to explore your emotional world, but because perhaps before, before you know, two years ago, I, I imagine something might have happened to you guys where you simply did not know how loving you are. You did not you know yourself emotionally speaking. Maybe because you were in a marriage or a partnership or the lack of partnership or in a any kind of relationship or friendship, whatever one-on-one -on -one connection you had in your life, where that was totally not reflective of the entity you are emotionally speaking. It may have reflected you mentally or, you know, your configuration, your archetype, et cetera, et cetera but not how and who you are emotionally speaking. And, you know, it took this period of solitude, of loneliness, of soul searching for you guys to actually look at yourselves authentically of who you are emotionally and the tower reversed. You discovered that you're actually a very, very loving person. And what does that have to do you, with all of this? You know, maybe right now you're desiring life to reflect the same thing professionally or emotionally or in, within your relationships. You are looking for something or someone to actually reflect this, to reflect your own vibes, your own configuration, your own emotional profundity. The Wheel of Fortune, and right now we are clarifying the Wheel of Fortune reverse. So we have the Ten of Cups reverse. Another Ten. And another reversed card. And we have the Ace of Swords. Now what this represents is that perhaps 
you know, the wheel of fortune, it represents the course of fate. Something is not completing the way you expected. This is where you will have a surprise moment because this is the ace of swords. Something comes into your life as a change of plans, as a surprise, as an unexpected. It can be a truth, a communication, an offer, something that changes your plans radically, suddenly, unexpectedly. Things that you might be wishing or working, more spiritually speaking, in your life right now to complete or to stabilize or to, you know, this wheel to make its turn, to get you into the new, the stable part, that is not going to happen the way you expect it. It's going to be a surprise. It's going to be a moment of unexpected, you know, the lightning in a sudden, because as I said, let me just draw another clarifier. What is the surprise element? We have the devil reversed and the moon reversed. Something that cuts off something that you're dependent on in the present moment, whatever that may be, a relationship, and when I say relation, not necessarily romantic, contractual relationship, a codependency. But when I say codependency, don't understand it in its extremes. It is just something that gives you stability in your life right now that is being replaced. And the moon reversed, it really comes even as a soul level surprise so something is changing very very quickly either someone who has authority over you a, a, a manager for example a father figure a partner or anything is either stepping down stepping back something happens to them where you take their place for example and you might not be ready for this, or you might not expect this. Let's clarify, this is how fate might be changing or, or turning. It is giving you much greater authority and choice. The world and the strength. Now, this to me says a lot about your heart. Whatever makes your heart I don't, I want to say happy, but understand it with a pinch of salt. Not the classical, you know, happiness where I have all my wishes are fulfilled and I'm happy. No, 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 no. The adventure of life, what you're doing, what you're living is making you happy. It is giving you a reason to live, a purpose, passion, determination. So, the flow is coming into your life. No, the sun rules Leo. You know what I mean? So we both have the strength card, which is the representative of the sign of Leo, the heart, etc. The sun, the ruling planet. And the temperance. The temperance is the flow. The temperance is the alchemy. The temperance is, is when... What life gives to us is like a food. We can digest it. We alchemize it. We work with it. We So this is what, in a way, it's coming. And you don't see it. You don't see this coming because it's a surprise. You know, maybe whatever you have in your life right now, the relationships and everything, the dynamic of love in your life right now, doesn't even give you the power to anticipate this, but fate is turning. But as I said, this may be the end result, you know, going with the flow, you know, and healing is not an easy process. So don't expect butterflies and sunshine and stuff like that, especially with this sudden change. This is where you will be invited to tap into the change, which can be radical, sudden, spontaneous, and work with it regardless. And it, this comes as a surprise. 
and something that you think or wish or want to complete, something that you're, you know, and this, that is going to be eliminated in a second. So things are not going to turn out or evolve as you think in the present moment. So clarifiers for this King of Swords, the full reversed and Six of Wands reversed. Sorry, sorry, Six of Swords reversed. Again, the full reverse is a leap of faith. It is surprising and it's, it is unexpected. It comes as a shock. And the Six of Wands, sorry, Swords, sorry, is represents your journey your transition which suddenly is going to be different from, from one day so basically your spirit guides are preparing you to expect a sudden change to expect a surprise to expect a sudden change of the course of fate even is something triggering your part of fortune in your own birth chart or maybe your vertex because regardless of what the sudden outplay of events may be these are guiding you to for you to be able to live your life on your terms emotional terms for love to be in your life what love is specific to you for your heart to ignite for you to be able to feel the adventure of life again, to break a certain kind of heart level stagnation. Even if you're a very creative person right now, maybe it was you forcing your creativity, which created a certain kind of rigid pattern. No, life is gonna be an adventure once again for you. This is the message. So thank you everyone for listening. I hope that this was helpful and you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support me, please like and share, or you can also leave the donation. You can find the PayPal. Sorry, my microphone fell off. So you can find the PayPal link in the description below. But this being said, thank you everyone and sending you many blessings. Hello everyone who's chosen the third and final pile. Just for the previous pile for you guys, we are allowing the spirit guys to leave a message freely, whatever it is that they want to speak about. And the veil between this, the veil between the worlds being especially thin in this present moment is really, really helpful in this sense. So let us allow the spirits to send their message. We have the king of pentacles. I just had to take a moment because this deck doesn't really depict which element it is. Then we have the emperor, if I'm not mistaken. Then we have the Empress. And one final card, and then I'm going to clarify these, just like I did for the previous piles. We have the Knight of Wands here. Now, this is quite a straightforward message because it kind of is guiding you guys to be present in your lives right now. Be fully immersed, even if there are a lot of distractions, even if there are a lot of things that might want to take away your focus, take away your attention. The Knight of a Pentacle, oh, sorry, the Knight of Wands is without a shadow of a doubt, a confirmation, an encouragement and guidance that right now you need to be investing your willpower, your focus, your sovereignty, 
your even your masculine specific creative energies into whatever is going on in your life right now because this king of pentacles does represent that your something in your life is under construction it is being built and this is you know just like rome a prolonged period of time because you know you're building either something which is meant to last for a lot of years or it is something big or it is something which is um uh, how should i say receptive of your skill and talent but on a level you never ever done it before in your life and that also means that with the construction like almost like a tower being raised i, I mean a, a tower being constructed a tower rising it is not instant and it is not work 24 7 you know because even a construction has to respect the weather construction is much more difficult when there are storms hurricanes etc so just because right now you might be you know uh need forced or needing to take a break that doesn't mean anything that doesn't mean that your building is not going to be finished and also whatever comes to you know a message uh almost like a channeled message is coming to me uh telling you guys that you know whatever it is that you're doing right now in your life it's almost like the symbolism um of the elephant the elephant from I, i'm not sure that it is the mammal who has the longest gestation period but it's one of those mammals which has the longest you know maybe if if it's not on first place it's in the top 10 so you can imagine that it's like an elephant an elephant needs to carry the baby within her more than a year three years i i, I don't know really I'm just guessing here, but if I'm not mistaken, it's something around three years where mm, another mammal, <clears throat> sorry, let's say a dog, well, that period is much less than a year. But the difference is when the animal, the element, uh, sorry, elephant gives birth, you know, the baby is big. And when the uh, elephant baby uh, gets on the ground it the whole ground shakes because it has a lot of weight and it's very very viable and its chances for survival because of its strength because of its size because of the parent is much much greater <clears throat> and the parents do take care of it so similarly speaking whatever it is that you're building Whatever it is that is under construction in your life right now is like a baby elephant in gestation. You can't expect it to be born prematurely. You need to have patience. Look, the emperor and the empress, the divine masculine, the divine feminine. This is where you need to be like a parent and be patient with your creation. Be patient with what you're working. May that be a relationship May that be a job, a career, a project, something artistic, a rearrangement of your life, investing into a home, a property, whatever your, or some people even having babies, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what it is. You, it, you, it really needs all your strength right now, even if it's hard for you, even if there's a storm in your life. If there's a hurricane in your life, you all you can do is take shelter. Yet still, the building efforts, the plan, and this king of wands, the willpower, the ambition, that needs to be present. You know, just wait out the storm. 
but it needs the full contribution of your being. The masculine part, exactly the king of wands, but the feminine part, the fertility, your ideas, your love for it, the love, the, the how should I say, the devotion, basically, to it, to its completion, needs to be present. Now, just like I did for the previous files, let's clarify. What does this King of Pentacles represent? The King of Pentacles. To give us a better situation. So we had here the Eight of Swords. Again, as I said, something is... I don't necessarily want to stay blocking the construction, whatever it is that you're building. Again, project, career, job, new relationship, new house, old house, investment, your own physical body healing. Why not the king of pentacles? Something is, how should I say, slowing the process down considerably and you're blind to the outcome. You're blind to the future. You're blind to how certain things are going to unfold in the future. But this blind part is something every pile had in common, even the previous piles. This Eight of uh, Swords, this just came to me. Maybe it is suggestive, you know, that whatever you're building has to stray from the original um, schematic, from the original blueprint, because things change and you cannot see its newer form. And we have the page of pentacles, exactly one step at a time. You can only influence the present moment, not necessarily the past, what was already built, neither the future. So as little as you can, the page, invest in your work, invest in whatever is building in your life, invest in its stability. Trying is better than not doing anything. Even if the try doesn't go all that fantastic, trying is very valuable here. So basically, even if you don't see whatever this is, your project, etc., all the things that I said earlier, even if you don't see them rising and completing itself, don't give up. Uh, So I'm asking to clarify the emperor. We have five of cups and the temperance card. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Is it the temperance or is it the star? It is the temperance because it's 14. Yeah, it's the temperance and the five of cups. Oh, so don't look at that part. Now, what this says to me, the five of cups is, and actually along with the temperance. Now, this to me says that you're a bit disappointed right now in your decision-making process. You know, the inner emperor. How you... um. How your decisions, how your actions, how your reactions brought the situation in the present moment. So where whatever you're building, your material, financial, whatever physical stability is in the present moment. So you're pretty much disappointed in your own strength, in your own power. Sorry, the microphone fell off. So. And also, along with the temperance, how you used your faith or how you used your resources or the flow of things. Maybe you're disappointed 
that right now you don't have enough resources in your life, either inner resources like willpower, ambition, determination, creativity, love, or external resources, money, time, situational, external uh, events, community, society, whatever it is to exactly uh, finish your building. But this disappointment, no, on one hand, it is natural because you. this is very, very important to you, another you know, king of, and maybe it's so important to you that it's already transformed into a frustration, into a certain kind of Latin uh, depression, not like the proper full scale depression where you can't even get out of bed. But when it comes to investing and loving uh, whatever you're building, this is where there's an inner blockage. The love is not flowing through. And because, you know, being disappointed is in a way natural, but you do need to fight it. You do need to unblock yourself by looking at the external situation, by, look, by a reality check. It is what it is. As I said, Rome wasn't built in a day or the example of the elephant. Things take time. And sometimes that time is halted by, an ex by the external weather. External climate, economic situation, you know, people around us, other areas of life. I would just like to ask for another clarification with this five of swords and temperance. Exactly, the queen of swords. Now, this queen of swords is reality check. It is what it is. Just because the present situation, the present set of your life, the present moment does delay or halt or inconvenience whatever you're building, especially the prosperous parts of it, that doesn't mean that everything is like a fiasco. That doesn't mean that you failed. With the five of cups, look, there are cups which are intact and not spilled over. So it's not over yet. You're not defeated yet. And the temperance, the flow, being in the flow also means that when the flow is not very abundant, it is a phase that all of us need to overcome. So don't be disappointed in yourself. Don't be disappointed in your decisions. You, I don't think there, you could have done anything all that much differently. Uh, the Empress, the Ace of Coins, Cups, Reverse. The Queen of Cups in upright position. Now, this without a shadow of a doubt means that your love is blocked. You know, the value that you feel. Maybe you're frustrated that whatever you're building is, it will take so much time to complete. And you, reality check, you're aware of this. More work, more effort, more investment or a waiting time which seems unreasonable to you, or something else that you need to do before you can resume this. So the love in your heart is blocked because the you don't feel the value right now. The Ace of Cups reversed. But this is where allow this, cry it out. Allow the waters to flow out from your soul, either through tears or sharing your frustration with someone or doing something to release the disappointment because you know the queen of cups, you need to re-nurture the love in your heart. You need to remember why building this symbolic castle, whatever that means to you, why it is so very, very important. And when you get back into the vibe, when you get back into this emperor, when you start trusting yourself once more in your sovereign will basically, you, the nurture will come to you. The Empress will be reactivated.
because that is what it and sometimes this means when your own love is not enough you know ask for help the, the love of another person friends family lover or even total stranger why not can reignite the love in your own heart so the two of pentacles exactly you need and the lovers you need to find you know a balance and this balance is to get more love in your life because when you in, when you you know those strongly and heavily invest love energy into something that drains your own love love isn't like an endless well it isn't like an infinite resource we need to feed on it in order to be able to generate it, if you know what I mean. So you need to find this balance in your life to get more love, whatever starts generating love in your life. May that be an adventure, may that be uh, games like to activate your inner child, may that be a romantic adventure or a one-time off or... um. Now, how sh how should I use this term not to be offensive? Like uh, an F buddy or, you know, a, a sensual friend or you need, but any kind of source to get love back, the flow of love back into your heart. And that will, without a shadow of a doubt, help your empress considerably. Empress being your Venus, your love. Uh, your pleasure. So we have the six of wands. So, so, sorry. Yeah, the six of swords with the ace of swords on this knight of uh, wands. So again, this will mean that going with the flow means there will come a moment when you can quantum leap into whatever is stagnating right now. So it's okay to stagnate because something comes, you know, the ace of sword of quick communication, a sudden spontaneous opening, an opportunity, resources, something to open the path for you so you can transition very, very quickly, quantum leap into a next phase of your building this stability for you. So don't threat. Go with the flow. Right now, the flow is scarce, but a moment will come when the flow will, you know, like over flood you. It will come as a big tide and that will push you exactly into the alignment that you need in order for this, whatever you're building, to have another milestone completed, to rise even more, even if it's not fully completed. So we have the four of pen, uh, four of cups. Again, this is the card of of contemplation. If your a part of your inner being just knows, that's exactly something will come along to give you a good push. Maybe you're disappointed because reality check rationally you don't see it yet and you cannot figure out what that push can be in your life your mind is blocked but your inner being still insists that something will come so this is like an inner battle a part of you the reality check says well nothing came yet so time to be disappointed but the other side of your being says don't worry it can still come so this is what you might need to do to unblock the flow of love in your life. So thank you everyone for listening. I do hope that this was helpful and useful. If you'd like to support my work, you can donate on the PayPal link in the description below or like and share. Thank you everyone. And with this, I'm bidding you farewell until next time.